It has been on Scandal. It's our, our weekly show of three guys talking about Scandal from a male perspective uh, in Washington, D.C. Superman, Troy Johnson is there. In uh, New York is Mark Clark. And uh, I'm Tony Scott in St. Louis. And people always wonder, like, how do y'all do that? How y'all able to do that? The magic of the internet. <laughs> and pricey software. So there you yeah. go. So so the episode was called The Testimony of Diego Muno, M- Munoz. Munoz. And, uh, Munoz. And, uh, it's... Come on, it's, Tony. So, it's your people. Come on. <laughs> so, so, I just... I, I stammered, man. Give me a, Troy, would you tell Tony how to say Munoz, please? Munoz. <laughs> Munoz. 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 See, Tony, yeah. this would happen at the, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce meeting years ago. <laughs> yes, they escorted me out. I'm sad, sad oh, to say. Well. I was... Just, oh well, we'll just call him Diego. You got that part right. Yeah, I got that part right, man. <laughs> so uh, we find out who exactly uh, Diego is in this episode, which is surprising. Yet it kind of wasn't in a way. So, but we begin with the vice president nominee, Senator Susan Ross. So they they pump her up. You know, the the Oval Office. They're telling her this is how this is going to go. This is going to be this is going to be great. You're going to be a great vice president. They put her in front of the press. She's hitting it out of the park, and then bam, reality set in, and she imploded. <laughs> she just kind of like blew the hell. She locked up and blew the hell up, man. She had a Bill Cosby I, and I think, that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, where did that come from? <laughs> I think, I think those of us who who have uh, who who work in in the public, you know, in front of microphones, I think we've all been down that road, though. Yeah, I've never seen one a road like that, though. That's a road. <laughs> that's a road less traveled. <laughs> you know what? I, I respected her because she, she reminded she she reminded me of me because you know I'm a conspiracy theorist. So all the BS that you have to produce when you're in public office, and that when when you when you mix the BS with truth, which was her daughter, it just kind of hit her like this is some <laughs> you, know, yeah. you know this is crazy. And so then you, yeah. that's what happens when you when you know when, when it hits you. Mm. Yeah, mm. she she her mind went off script and it was a wrap. Oh boy, it was ugly. And. Uh, and then after that, man, it's, it's you, you know, it's interesting, though, the dynamic of when something goes left like that, how the uh, the, the the spinsters, man, how they they work to to get it back, get back on message, man. And what they do, the tricks that they employ and stuff like that. It's crazy. But Olivia stops the uh, landlord. The landlord is at Lois's her next door neighbor, Lois's house where, where Rose is. And, and uh, the landlord's telling Rose that, you know what, uh, we changing the locks. She has to pay her rent. You know what, what? What we've all faced from time to time in our life. You know the rent's not paid. You got to go, right? Yeah. So uh, the good news is uh, Marla Gibbs is back. <laughs> yes. Yes. You know, and she tells because uh, Olivia stops the landlord and says, "Well, actually, she's got five days from the from the time you serve these papers. She's got five days, so you can't change the locks today." And then the, you know the landlord guy puts his head down and walks away and stuff. But Rose tells Olivia that Lois always told her, if you're ever in trouble, go talk to the black lady across the hall. <laughs> because Rose Rose wants to know where Lois is, right? Lois has just disappeared, you know? And uh, <laughs> the, irony, you the know? irony of that conversation was Olivia told her white friends, don't ever knock on the old black lady's door across the hall. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do, don't ever knock on the yeah. old black lady's door. Okay. So Olivia makes the trip back to her, her office, OPA, and uh, she wants the team to find Lois or Lois's body yeah. because obviously Olivia knows what happened to Lois because Lois's dead carcass was laying on top of her in a body bag. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, Olivia so, was wearing the new scent by Fabergé. <laughs> by Lois J. Lois. <laughs> You know, Lois, 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 Sonia. By <laughs> Lois, Sonia. <laughs> yes. the breakfast is dead today and it's here now. Lois. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the attorney general, David Rosen, apparently he has this thing he does once a year where he lets people uh, just come and talk to him, come and tell them, you know, what's up, what's in their world. What, 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 uh, what does he, what, what do they want him to look into? And, and I was actually told a long time ago, before this show was even a thought, that that actually used to be a thing. Like back in the day, when it was, the world was a lot safer, they would have, they would have people, uh, stop by, were allowed to come up and talk, and actually talk to the president, and and uh, you know, and just say, what's you know, see what's up, what's on your mind, 
Yeah. I think they cut that out after Lincoln, though. So <laughs> I was, I was going to say, if you saw the movie Lincoln, that was yeah. that was in one of the scenes. <laughs> yeah. So a, a woman wants to talk to David Rosen about a super secret spy agency called B six thirteen. That gets David Rosen's attention. <laughs> yes. David was and going. Then, David was going through the motions. What? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Spy agency, yeah, yeah. Get that all the time. Yeah, yeah. B six thirteen, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> Just one of those things. And it's Huck's wife. It's Kim. You know, and and she's got files. Yes. Yeah, she so is. told you that. So, told so you she that garage at uh, <laughs> that wasn't working. It wasn't gonna work. She out got. Right. She got. She got. She got files, and that got his attention. That got his undivided attention. You know when she she pulled out the 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 uh, the files and that he just kind of <laughs> you know one of those kinds of things. Meantime, back to Senator Ross, the press is raking her over the coals for that laugh. She goes on Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel tells her it's the number one ringtone on iTunes. Because <laughs> that snort, that snort slash laugh, and they're they're having that field day with her, so they're trying to you know they're gonna have to fix this. Have you all ever like done I that? Said, have you ever laughed and then had a snort on it? I, I'm. You know what? I'm not a snorter. I'm not. I mean, I'm not. I have mean, you? Accidentally. I mean. No. No. I, I, that's never happened. I, I have snorted, and I. You know. I have. I have a tendency to hit you with the. <laughs> sometimes. You know. <laughs> the smedley. The smedley, and then. A <laughs> not the. Not the smedley. Smedley. Uh, oh man. Mm. <laughs> See. Yes. <laughs> the whiskey lab. <laughs> that's, <right. laughs> that's a sign you've been drinking too much whiskey. <laughs> That's a sign that your soul is leaving your body through your mouth. <laughs> is that what that That's is? That's really what it means. <laughs> oh, man. So David goes over to OPA. He tells Jake and Huck about the B613 files that the woman had. And Jake says, well, we're going to have to kill her. <laughs> we're going to have to kill Diego Munoz. So we're going to have to do all that. And then Huck says, well, that's me. I'm Diego. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the guy she's talking about. Kind of anticlimactic so now, there. Because yeah, it was. Huck was not going to say anything. He was looking crazy, like, oh, snap, they're on to me. Yeah. Well, I think he came clean when Jake says, you know, we're going to have to start killing people up in here. Right. So, you know, we're going to start we're gonna start killing people, you know. So he came clean that way because he, he just wanted to uh, <laughs> and Jake make actually it right. quoted a rap song and said, I am a killer, so don't push me. So he was <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so meantime, uh, uh, Abby, the White House hires – Abby's boyfriend Leo, who's uh, who's really a political spinster, is what he what he does. He's a coach. He does all this stuff, and he's he's working with the Senator Susan Ross to get back on point for the vice president nomination. And he's wearing her down. He won't even let her go pee. Mm, a little bit much, you, you know. You always the pee is usually the the sure way out for a couple of minutes. <laughs> when you say I got to pee, they everything usually stops. Right? You gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. Right? Because you don't want no accident. Because who's gonna clean that up? Right? It's the White House, baby. <laughs> you know, but 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 uh, he said no. He said no, and it got to be too much, and uh, she quits. She says, "I don't want to be the VP. I quit. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. It's not about the will of the people." She says. Well, the funny part was, she don't want to be the vice. She doesn't want to be the vice president. That <laughs> was the, that the was president. the only angle that I was kind of like. She doesn't want to be the vice president. So yeah, she said that last week. Yeah, it's like uh, I don't, so. It's kind of like I don't want to be. She did it anyway. Want, though. I'm a pain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be the vice president. So, <laughs> so Huck goes to his wife Kim and explains that you just don't go around talking about B six thirteen, which he should have had this talk with her when he dropped the files off at her crib. Yeah. You just don't drop off a box of files and say read them and then call me and not expect her to go to somebody based on what's in those files. Oh my God! I mean, come on, what did you expect her to do? <laughs> he was desperate, Tony. He was trying to get his love back, man. <laughs> But you got to tell her, don't talk to you, read these, but don't talk to anybody about these but me. I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, come on. You can't have all those rules when you're dealing with love, trying to get your love back. Yeah, okay. The funny thing is, though, she thinks she knows how to handle this. She thinks she, I know what to do about this. You know, I'm, I'm moving forward with my plan. I'm going to do, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to push this through to the attorney general. And it's like. You don't want to do, really want to do that. And, and at this moment, he started to feel like a married guy again. <laughs> what? No control of your life. Sorry. <laughs> oh no, man. I, you know, I, I still think he should have had that conversation last season when he left the, the files at her at her place. Tony, he wasn't. She wasn't talking to him. 
It wasn't no conversation. But I mean, all he had to say before you, if you read these files and then don't talk to anybody, call me. Okay, great. And when she read the files, she would, she would have understood that when she read the files, but he never said that. She said, okay, crazy man. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah, yeah, really. So Leo and Abby argue about whether Susan Ross is fit to be VP, you know? And it's funny because they get in the bed and he puts his mouthpiece in, his mouth guard that he sleeps with, and, and, uh, and then it's assumed that he's going to sleep. Once you put that in, there's no more conversation for the night, right? And she was like, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, are they married? Yeah. <laughs> are they, how'd they know that move? They're, you know, so, so they but start he, talking he about it. Say, he was like, okay, we're going to talk now. I've been trying to talk <laughs> all damn night. She had no response to that, though, did she? <laughs> no, she didn't have, but, you know. But you ain't going to sleep. Yeah. Until we had his talk. I, yeah. Because you know, what, what, you know, a lot of times though, when you when you, when you make your point with a woman, your woman, they clam up. They don't say anything. They just, they just like, you know, it's yeah. like, come on, man, say something. Yeah, that is- you know, they they just got to put their head down. Don't say a damn thing. So, but anyway, uh, uh, Abby fires her boyfriend. She fires him. Who fired? Who gets fired in their drawers, man? <laughs> who, who who does that happen to, man? But it happened. So, so back to Rose, man, Marla Gibbs' character. Rose knows Lois is gone, but she wants to know what happened. She knows because Lois left and left her credit cards, her ID, all her wallet, her purse was left behind. Mm-hmm. And then Olivia pushes a little bit, and then she finds out that apparently Rose and Lois were a little bit more than just friends. They were, they were in fact, lovers <laughs> and had been, had been lovers since they were teenagers. Mm. But then when Lois's parents found out, they sent her away. They kind of lost contact. Lois got married. And then when uh, her husband died, many, 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 many years later, they reconnected. And uh, Olivia tells her, I'm going to do my very best to bring Lois back to, you know, to, 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 um, to bring Lois back to you. You know, I'm going to do my very best to do that. And, you know, the thing is, is that Olivia, Olivia, Olivia knows everything except where the body is. Yeah. And said nothing. And said nothing. Yeah, I thought she was going to soften, but I wanted to, first of all, shout out Shonda. I think this is the first older black lady gay scene ever. Uh, they get a prop. Also, okay. I want to shout her out because if you, if you notice, if you look closely in the wallet, there was a Golden Corral gold card, which is very popular <laughs> with older gay black women. Um, you know, very accurate. And <laughs> my only beef was, I, I thought they should have dropped a song when, when she was reminiscing about the love mm-hmm. that she misses, man. <laughs> like what? <laughs> what song would you have chosen? <laughs> I'm leaving it. <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys think? I was thinking, what would have been a good song? I don't know. Uh, the love I the love I lost. I don't know. Uh, I lost I don't know. on my mind. <laughs> you know. Mm. I don't know. I don't know, man. That's that's a good one. You and I T Y. Leave, com- leave a comment down below if you have an idea of what song should have played in that scene. <laughs> you and I T Y. <laughs> Come on, let us know what. What are you calling a bitch? <laughs> I'm my girlfriend. Man, oh, man. So Olivia, as it turns out, walks around her apartment with a gun in one hand <laughs> and a dirty couch and 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 a, and, and a toothbrush in the other, and it's like and that couch. Now, Olivia needs because Olivia still is traumatized about what she went through. Yes. All right, the whole kidnapping thing, and to me, she needs she she needs to get rid of everything, move yeah. and start over. I mean, if you can afford to do that, which obviously she can, uh, and if she couldn't, the people she knows would help her. Yeah, Tony, we've seen you know? this before. Mm-mm. She gets into a funk, and she you know. Uh, we, we we thought she was okay because last week was such a you know a traumatic episode and you know she was able to pull it together and make it happen, but you know there are these times where she just kind of is just in a fog for an episode or two, you know people are waiting for her to do something she's not quite on the mark she's just you know like uh, and here we are again. Now, for a good yeah. reason. I mean, she was kidnapped. I mean, yeah. right, you know, right. But but if you can if you can get away, I mean, every time she sees that spot on that couch pillow, 
it t- it takes her. It's a trigger. Well, it, and it should, and it, it obviously it, it has to be a trigger. Obviously, so, she didn't have a couch in college. Everybody knows you just flip the pillow over. <laughs> <laughs> you use the other side. <laughs> Come on, everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. That's a white couch. <laughs> Come on now! <laughs> oh that's man! That's the equivalent of when your when your cousin came to visit at the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, girl. It's all right. It's good. Don't worry about it. We got it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Apparently, all, just flip it. All flip it over. <laughs> yeah, just flip it. Flip the damn thing over. See, it's okay, girl. It's, not, it's fine. No, we know man. you ain't going. You ain't going to swim with us today. I know. We know. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. <laughs> you, can, you can put you can put the sunscreen on. You just, you just hang out with us. Not even get in the water. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> That's why that plastic got on the couch in the first place. See, yeah, should have yeah. had your plastic. the hallway. Plenty of plastic. Wouldn't have been a problem. <laughs> problem. No blood on her couch. Yep. <laughs> That's why nobody knows where she is. How <laughs> Roast didn't roast didn't see anything. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well. So Abby goes to Olivia to help get Susan Ross to the vice president confirmation hearings. And and she does it. She talks to Susan, and Susan goes before the congressional hearings, and she hit it out of the park. She hit it out of the park. You know, her answer, when they say, well, you know, you're one, you're one catastrophe away from being the president. How do we know, you know, this, this, and this? And she was like, you don't. What? Which was re- which was actually refreshing, you know, <laughs> when you think about it. It was actually refreshing because she was like, you don't know. But I surround myself with people who do know. They keep me informed. They advise me on what the best course of action is, and then I'll decide. You'll be seeing that again. Hillary's team was watching. <laughs> <laughs> Taking notes on that section. Well, well yeah, was, but, you know. Was the brother supposed to be Elijah? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If so, Elijah was happy. Like, okay. Yeah. Got a little younger guy for me. <laughs> So, but now you got to get the Senate. The Senate has got a problem with uh, Senator Susan Ross. That's the, but Olivia doesn't think they have a problem with Senator Ross. She says they have a problem with Fitz, which makes a lot of sense when you think about it, right? And and then she used the line that's going to be used uh, in political in political races, in real political races from here to eternity. You made a mockery of democracy. Yeah, yeah. that'll be the one that'll be on bumper stickers it'll have the president's last name and then it'll say that not just the president obama but future presidents the opposition will always have that'll be on stickers and t-shirts and buttons and everything just wait for it well but tony what people don't know is that came from the rap song check yourself before you wreck yourself um mm-hmm. it's a line in that song <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> it fits right in too <laughs> yeah that's what i'm saying it's gonna be used forever man ice cube wrote that yeah <laughs> No, you. That, I'm gonna let that one stand. Man. Okay, that was good. Okay, Mm-mm. good to go. <laughs> so mockery. Olivia, Olivia tells Fitz, you need to go to the hill and you need to beg them to forgive you. And he, at first, he's like, get out! Ain't begging nobody for that. Big the president, for, I'm I'm big. The president, man. You need president. You got built-in swag. Even Bush had swag. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And, and uh, what's that? I, I give it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Huck and Quinn have found Lois's body in a state park. Damn. Patapsco State Park. I like that's where I go bike ride. <laughs> could have could have helped out on this case. I thought I well, thought they made a Patapsco Arena. I thought Reggie Reg might have had something to do with it. <laughs> no. No. Oh, no. But uh, you know, apparently they found it using the serial number that was on. What did she have? A hip replacement, knee replacement? What was it? A hip replacement. Kind of scary when you yeah. that is. That, I just had for the a weird thought. It's just like, wow, that's kind of scary to have a body part that has a number on it. But it helped in this case. That Jesus didn't make. <laughs> <laughs> Only one man knows your number. <laughs> Only one man knows your number. Well, two, uh, two actually, John Hopkins and Jesus. <laughs> Man, come on. <clears throat> Huck, Huck gets a taste of what his family life should have been when he's uh, sitting at dinner with uh, Javi and Kim. And that feels kind of good on him. Yeah, it was nice. It was nice, right? That, that looked like the last time. He's like, 
So this is what it was like. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. log in. <laughs> yeah, right, because all this this is the last time this is going to happen. Yep, and and Kip's proud of Huck for agreeing to testify. You know, and I think that makes him feel good because you know now I'm starting to get this love back. Not like maybe not necessarily love, love, but you know, starting to get this. You know, people starting to believe me and believe in me. You know, he hadn't had that for a long time. You know. Huck tells Quinn to tell Charlie to destroy the B613 files that Charlie has. But then Quinn's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I haven't said anything. They haven't asked a damn question. I haven't asked anything. Y'all got, y'all got to tell me what's going on. You know? Because, I mean, I can see that. Someone's asking you to tell some, give somebody a message, and you don't even know what the message is. <laughs> it's like, well, why am I going to say that? You know? I mean, I think it's a natural reaction to want to know. <laughs> Did he want her to ask? I mean, you know, Huck kind of tiptoed around her, you know, yeah. like, Ask me something. <laughs> <You know>? yeah. <laughs> I got a secret. I want to tell somebody. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, you know, while testifying, uh, Huck can't remember anything. All of a sudden, he don't, I don't remember. I, I, I don't know what he's talking about. So after David, you know, threatens to have Kim disbarred, all of a sudden, Huck's like, I remember. <laughs> I remember the hole. I remember the hole. He described, you know, he said when he was in the hole, he had to use his imagination to cope. And the way the way uh, he delivered that man, that was you know, there's always a weekly soliloquy on some angle. This was the one, right? I mean, he even had David crying. It was good, man. It was good, man. It was it was great. Yeah. It was the way he described what he went through and how he had to run in his mind. He was you know in parks and he was up in the mountains and he was building things and you know writing letters and leaving them up on the bookshelf and all that. And but the whole, but he was always in the whole. But in his mind, this is what he had. This was his coping mechanism. Which, wow, you think about that for a second. It's like, man, he was stuck in this little bitty hole where he probably couldn't even sit up. But he went to 157 countries. <laughs> yeah. In his, mind, in his mind, he had to do that. His and I, wife's tears got me. His wife's tears got me. I was cool. He, we're looking at her. I was like, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Lord. But, don't he do it? Oh, Lord. But, but I, I think it was an eye opener for David. I mean, David knows about B six thirteen. He knows more than most yeah. about B six thirteen. And then to find out what B six thirteen did to Huck was like, wow, you know. And I think it fired him up because he has a conversation with Jake that we'll get into coming up. But uh, the president goes to the Senate, you know, and he begs, and uh, and Vice President uh, Susan Ross. She's now she gets confirmed. Senator Ross gets confirmed. So exactly how Olivia said it was going to play out, it played out. It's still going to be a problem because you know when she's not laughing, when she's not yeah guffawing, yeah she, she's smart. She is, she's but be, I mean, I'll, she's going to be <clears throat> I think more formidable uh, for uh, for Melly than than. I think they've totally thought. underestimated this woman. I think you're right. I, I think you're right. But I also thought about what kind of deals did he have to cut with certain politicians to get this done? You know, because that, that's really all it's about up there is like, you know, the president needs your vote. Okay, what can you do for me and my state? Mm -hmm. You know, right. so we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But uh, Kim uh, kisses Huck goodnight, you know, at her front door. And, uh, I, and he felt good about that. You could see that little smile on his face as he walked away. That was that was kind of nice, man. That, you know, good for, that, he, good for Huck, finally, man. Dang. The ice is clearly melting. I, but I thought him and Quinn were going to be a couple because I didn't think he was going to be able to go back to that life. Oh, you know, he's a, he's about that family life, yo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Olivia finally has to have the conversation with Rose and tell her that Lois was found uh, in in a park in Georgetown on a bench. Mm -hmm. And that she she went peacefully. She switched the story up completely. Oh, she had to though. I mean, what's she gonna tell her? Yeah, yeah. She got shot in the chest, and they laid her on top of me in a body bag as they moved me to a destination where I was gonna be auctioned off. <laughs> Who was gonna buy that? You know, <laughs> who's gonna buy that one? Right. Well, the, first, the first story she was gonna say she was found at Barry Farms by John Thompson. Oh, but <laughs> they, switched, they switched it around. Alonzo Morning and John Thompson found her. <laughs> On a bench after a pickup game. Because <laughs> we know she was the first player in the WNBA. Oh, boy. Oh, man. That's... <laughs> she didn't have her story right, though. She did have that kind of look 
<laughs> to kind of what Mark was saying. She was like, she was on a bench <laughs> in uh, Georgetown. <laughs> Rose was like, <laughs> "You bullshitting me." <laughs> <laughs> she did have that look like George. Uh, yeah. Well, but my Molly Gibbs always has that look. So it's tough. You can't really question <laughs> anything you say to Molly Gibbs. Maybe questions. Man. What you say? <laughs> I, I wasn't at home. I was at the store. <laughs> Man, Rose was like, "Why'd you have to leave me now?" Oh, low, oh, low. Oh, that was just sad. Broken hearted, man. Broken hearted, man. So finally, Olivia gets rid of the couch pillow, man. She decides, "I'm not gonna flip it over. I'm getting rid of it. Yeah. It's a wrap. I got money. I don't need to do. I don't need to flip it over. I got money. <laughs> Put it outside. <laughs> Put it outside. <laughs> Put it outside of my door. It's like trash yes. hotel room." <laughs> Then she has popcorn, wine, and she puts her gun down on the coffee table. This woman clearly, and I, you know, I mean, certainly she has a right to be traumatized, but man, walking around your own place, first of all, you got 900 locks on your front door, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'm surprised. You remember know, years ago when they put the, they made the club for doors? Yes. Remember that? <laughs> Why didn't she have that, man? I mean, she's got 900 locks. That club in the you know, remember that they had that on TV the club for the door for you, for the front door uh, no you they, they put a hole in the on the floor <laughs> and then you would put this like a pipe thing in there and then people couldn't open the door because that pipe was in the way it was entrenched <laughs> into the floor you don't remember that I do remember I remember that. that I remember that yeah uh, I also yeah. remember speaking of the club I remember uh, you know you ever see news stations they would you know sometimes they want to figure out like, like in today's time. You know how a hacker would get into your computer, right? So back in the day, you know when people were buying the club for their car, of course they go to a a, a person who's who's been convicted of car theft. They're like, well, what do you think about the club? You know, this is this is supposed to be you know the ultimate car protection system. So this guy gets a hacksaw, and cuts through the steering wheel. Here's your club. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Everybody thought about that, didn't you? thought about that one. Or like in our case, my mom's case, we had everything on the front door. It just broke a window. So. <laughs> <laughs> Take it out the window. Okay, damn. Door is secure. Locked. Not moving. We were going to use the door anyway. Right. <laughs> Don't you know we come through the windows? <laughs> Man. <laughs> So Jake tells David to uh, shut down the B613 investigation. And David says, no, we're not going to do that. We're going after the bad guys. He's fired up from, you know, Huck made him cry. So now he's ready. We're going after the bad guys. And then Jake has to remind him, you know, we, we're the bad guys. Hello. <laughs> we're, we're, so. Over here. Hello. <laughs> Hello, mijo. We're the bad guys. We're the bad guys. Snap out of it. Damn. Jake has been the voice of reason so many times in this series. Yeah. Though played by Olivia many times, he's the voice of reason most of the time. He's the voice of reason, but he's still Ed McMahon. Yes. And what's funny, I love how Fitz gets mad on stuff that don't matter most of the time. Yeah. What? I'm not begging. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Calm down, Fitz. Gonna <laughs> <laughs> put that head vein away? Yeah. <laughs> head vein. Not the head vein, man. The head vein on you. All right, tell me what I missed, man. Uh,. You missed uh, Olivia, you know, when they were at, when they were at the funeral home with Rose, and you know she was telling that live a story. She also had a whole a bunch of flashbacks about her life and where you know she was thinking about Fitz, thinking about Huck, or not Huck, uh, thinking about uh, Jake, Jake. Yeah. And <laughs> then she cooked up her lie. <laughs> yeah. I was, you know, it's kind of like, okay, why is she? She's. Is is it because? Here's a person who's lost someone and, you know, the, the center of their life. And, you know, and I'm out here walking around in my house with a gun. You know, my life is crazy. Seems like she had that kind of moment, you know. When she was yeah. reflecting on that, because she was caught in her memory and she's, you know, the sound of the river is like, OK, wait a minute. Now. You know, that, that you don't want to smell or even hear anything in D.C. when it comes to water. Just... <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah, <laughs> it was like what? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I like that. I love the. Um... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tony. I was, I was, it'll come back. No, I, I was going to say, you know, this lie that Olivia told Rose. Who amongst us though would would not have tried to soften that somehow like Olivia did? 
You know, if you can get away with telling an elderly woman that the love of her life was brutally murdered, if you can explain that away in another fashion that you know it's going to be it's going to be hard anyway, but it, it just to soften it, she went peacefully. She probably just sat down on the bench and and just died and you know, rather than to have to tell her the woman was shot point blank range in the chest on the couch at her apartment. I mean, who amongst us would not have lied about that? Man? Tony, we all would have told it lies. Well, Tony, it's very interesting you say that. Me and the wife had this conversation just the other day. And it's funny. It's like I think there are two I think there are definitely two schools of thought when it comes to stuff like that. You know, I th- I was going to say the other way, Tony. I thought that Olivia was going to share truth because mm. the truth in a sense is her way <clears throat> to finally recover herself. Yeah. She trusted this she trusted this woman. This woman had shared a personal story with her, so I thought she was going to, to re- reward her with the truth. Reward her with the truth because you at least to know the least to know you you deserve to know the truth for this person that you spent your whole life with. That's what or you, you spent your whole life to be to kind of be with. So that was interesting on that take. But that is interesting, Tony. You're right. I think it's probably more towards like you said, most people just want to think of peaceful thoughts and be kind of go off into the sunset. Then there's other group probably like me who want I want to know what happened. You know, so it's interesting. But even, <clears throat> but I mean, when you're when you're when you're an elderly, and you're far from elderly, obviously. Well, but when you're elder, I, you're elderly, and you've lost, you know, you you lost you 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 lost the love of your life early on, and then you reconnected late in life. Do you really want to? Do you do you really need to know that she was brutally murdered? You don't need to know that, do you? I mean, do you really need to know? I, that? know I, mean, I just want to know the truth. That's all. I, I don't like to. I don't like. You know, who am I, man? This is just me. Troy, what are you, what are you for, Troy? I was going to say there's the X factor is that, you know, a, a, a murder, someone who's murdered, you know, the truth will come out at some point. And I think, I, to me, in a situation like that, uh, lying about how somebody died, you know, could you imagine, I mean, it's not in the arc of the storyline as far as we know, but can you imagine if Rose found out the real truth? And how devastated she would be? Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I think I think you, I think you got to do better than just come up with a story about she died on a bench in Georgetown. <laughs> you know, like, then, but you know the the other side of that, Troy, is that like, you know I didn't see <clears throat> Jim Vance talk about that on the news. <laughs> I was just going to say the other thing is who's to say that Rose didn't believe a word she said, yeah. but appreciates the fact that Olivia was trying to soften it for her. Yeah. Could have could have been that too. I mean, right. but then again, I mean, but you a, know, like but an old lady, what, what, old lady would have told, baby, that was nice. I know you lying to me. <laughs> <laughs> she would have told her. That was, I understand. That's nice. <laughs> I understand. I, and what's the big ass in the couch in your apartment? <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're gonna eat that, if you're gonna eat that popcorn and drink that wine, you need a mint, girl, because that's gonna be wrong. <laughs> Everybody knows that wine and popcorn make bad breath. <laughs> she did let she did let Rose into the apartment. Yeah, and and yeah. and now that we're laughing about this, did she let her sit down on the couch at on the stain? <laughs> oh no, <laughs> I'm stain. not sure. I'm not no. sure. No. I, I don't know. That's you a good question. I don't know. Oh, Lord, girl, I done, I hope I didn't do nothing to your couch. You know, I, girl, I have a weak pelvic floor, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stop. Just stop. God. Oh, man. That's the episode. The testimony of Did Diego you Munoz. you physical or something, man? <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me give props to my wife. For, she gave me that joke. <laughs> Me a story about a friend, and I. And sorry. <laughs> that one stayed with me. Y'all, you know, I knew that would get you, though. <laughs> that, that, that ice is getting really thin over there, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. You know, winter is almost over. Man. <laughs> The testimony of Diego Munoz. It was the episode, though. So uh, thanks for checking us out. Give it a thumbs up if you don't mind our review or subscribing to the channel helps. So uh, that that means a lot. People were posting last week about uh, w- where can we contribute. So I posted links in it. I'll post it again. Awesome. Thanks so uh, much for that idea. So that was cool. Tony, keep it up. We're at bed. Money. Give us money. <laughs> well, yeah. Just a little something, man. Please. Something. You know. So that's appreciated. Some somebody actually. Uh, Became became a patron of ours, man, for two ninety nine a month. Hey, man, if NPR can do it, so can we. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, right. <Yeah. laughs> we 
We need your help. Please. Be a subscriber. Please, so, Come on. You know what, Tony? Also, great. why don't you put a poll up there, Tony, too, if they want us to do Men on Empire? Because I know a lot of people are asking us, man. Mark Mark cussed me out earlier, man, because yeah. uh, he he, call, he called what do you, he calls old school radio guys. Yeah, <laughs> we had a conversation. And we just missed the boat. Just drew, the boat just went off past us. Like, well, but I mean, we, we didn't miss it. We just you know, it's 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 hard to get three men schedules together to do two shows a week. If we move it to three shows a week, you know, it's pretty tough. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I would I would hate to like commit to it and then we couldn't do it because you're right. You know, you're right. You know, I'm just, I'm just saying. So you know, and then, and then, uh, you know, brother don't know what his cable's gonna be off anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it's one of those things, man. And you could say you could go somewhere and get free Wi-Fi. And, well, yeah, but when you, when you're, on, when you're the hub, you need all this. You know, you the hub, Tony. You need the hub. You gotta have. You, it. you need the speed of the of a of a strong internet signal to get this done. And I'm not gonna get that at a coffee shop. So you know, <laughs> public but, library. Yeah. Anyway, so thanks for watching. Uh, like I said, a thumbs up and a subscribing to the channel uh, is 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 free to do. And if you, of course, want to want to be a paying patron of ours, you can go to Patreon, p a t r e o n dot com slash uh, Tony Scott Media and pledge a two ninety nine a month. That would be very saying. welcome. So, all right. Uh, thanks so much again for watching. In uh, New York is Mark Clark. In Washington D.C. is Troy Johnson. I'm Tony Scott in St. Louis, and we'll see you next time for Men on Scandal.